welcome to my channel this is Deborah. thank you guys for checking in today i'm going to talk to you about uh, four stories in the bible which shows uh, the changes that happens when you meet jesus in your life i've met jesus in my life and i've seen so many changes so i'm going to talk to you about four people that met jesus and their life changed it's about two women uh, these stories, they are stories that you are very much familiar with. Uh, the first story comes from uh, Acts 3, uh, from verse 1 to 10. It's about the broken man who was at the before get. Uh, so I'll read. Uh, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man is, who was lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of beautiful to ask for money and uh, for, from people who entered the temple when seeing peter and john about to go into the temple he asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with peter and john said look at us so peter and john asked him to say look at us uh, so he gave them his attention so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them then peter said silver and god i do not have but what i do have i'll give you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk so my story is about this man who was sitting by the gate called beautiful he's been there for so many years so he had accepted this situation so what he was going to do was just ask for money. That was what he wanted. That's what he was asking for. That's what he knew. He thought that his problem was very chronic. There was no, no other hope that he had. So when Peter and John asked him, look at us. When uh, Peter and John went ask for his attention, he thought they, was going to, they were going to give him what, just a short-term help. So this man was getting a short-term help. He needed to go there daily every day of his life. This was a short-term solution. He didn't think there would be a long-term solution to his problem. So he went into that gate day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out. So you might be the one, maybe in a chronic problem, but having that problem for years. And you are just saying, you know, I'm able to, just to, to live with it. Because this is what, what I, 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 I am in. You might be in drugs and alcohol. You might be facing some other challenges of life that you've been in it. But you're just starting to settle in it, saying this is what I've got to live with it. But these people, when they met, when this man met Peter and John, John said, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But uh, what I do have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. So this man, as he rose up and walked, he took his mat and started walking, and started jumping around. He started to jump around like a baby. He was so, so happy. He was so excited about his healing. You know, so when he was asked to get up and walk he tried his legs i'm sure i think he tried his legs and see if this is actually true that it happened to him but finally he stood up and uh, he had to put his faith into action by standing up and he started walking but he was healed in the name of jesus of nazareth so this name, this is a name which is above every other name. This is the name which is above every other power. This is the name that Peter knew that when he speak about this name, when he extend his hand to this man, the power of God would move through Peter's hand into this man's limbs, would move through Peter's hand and heal this man, whatever that condition is. I'm telling you, uh, brother, my brother or my sister, that it is the same power today which is operating in this world, which is operating in us, 
it is the same power, it is the same authority that when we speak uh, with the name of Jesus, things will change. When we speak with the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he didn't say Jesus, he says Jesus of Nazareth. At that time, there were many Jesuses, there were many people in Jerusalem probably who were called Jesus, but he specified that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So today I'm, I'm saying, you know, there have been names in the past. There have been names that have been known, but these names have passed away. But the name of Jesus of Nazareth has got power. The name of Jesus of Nazareth has got authority. The name of Jesus of Nazareth is still healing today. So when this man met with the power of Jesus of Nazareth, he resurrected walk and walk with Peter knew about this name. Peter knew about this power. Peter knew about the authority in this name. So today I want to introduce you to this name, the name of Jesus of Nazareth, that when you meet this name, your situation will change. No matter how old you've been it, no matter how chronic that problem is, no matter how long, how many years have been in that problem? But the name of Jesus of Nazareth, it will change. The second man I'm going to speak to you about is the man at the pool of Bethsaida. This story is found in John 5, uh, from verse 5 to 7. So I'll, I'll try and read about it. But you know about this story probably. Now a certain man was there who had infirmity. 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time because Jesus was a prophet he knew that this man was in that condition for a long time he said to him do you want to be made well the sick man answered him sir I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is being stirred up but while I'm coming, another steps in down before me, and immediately the man was made well, took up this bed and walked away, and that day it was a Sabbath. Ah, man. So this man, Jesus said, do you want to get well? But this man did not answer. He started to tell Jesus about his problems. He started to tell Jesus about how bitter he was at people maybe who were jumping into the water first because this this pool was being steered by the angel which used to come once a year to come once a year so he would come every day not knowing when the water would be stirred but what i want to remind you today is jesus power is operating inside of us daily it was unlike that those, time, those times when Jesus was found in one place and the water only be stirred once a year. Probably you go the whole year without being stirred. Probably you go in, but the water is when the water is stirred, only one person will be healed. So they have to be pulled out and wait for another chance because he couldn't walk. He was not able to jump into the water. So he started to tell Jesus about his problems. He started to tell Jesus about why he was not healed, about to Jesus, about his own personal problems, about his power not able to get into the water. He was beginning to tell Jesus about his problems, not knowing that he was talking to the problem solver, not knowing that he was talking to the angel who actually stirs the water, not knowing that he's actually speaking to the solution. He was still thinking, about the waters not being stirred. So today you might be thinking that, ah, I, I, I'm still, I, I'm not able to save God because I'm bitter. Because this is what my parents did. I'm bitter because this is what so and so did for me. I won't be able to save God because this is what my mother did for, for me, did to me. I won't be able to save this because this is what my dad, this is my, what my grandparents did to me. So some of us were not able to receive from God because we are blaming other people for the situation that you might be in. You might blame other people that why we are not able to save God because we might have been hurt in another church. You might have been hurt in another situation that 
is making you not to save God is you should do not able to receive your blessing because you are still bitter this man was bitter he was bitter to the people who were not able to throw him into the water he might have been bitter to his friends that were not maybe they were tired of of coming every day and the water would be stirred and they would not be able to put him into the water but this man was just a complaining man he was complaining he was bitter he was complaining about the situation at the moment but but the person who was complaining to was the master himself was the king himself was the healer himself was the helper that he needed was the angel that had come in front of him but probably you could have missed the opportunity of speaking to the healer of being healed of being receiving whatever he needed because he was busy complaining he was he was distracted from his uh, from receiving what he needed to receive because he was just his mind was somewhere else his mind was not focusing on knowing that this man actually should have just answered yes i want to get well but nevertheless he just said get take your mate and go so this man i had when we read further down the story the the, the the passage this man was jumping this man was telling about jesus this man was going about in the synagogue telling that he has been healed so this man was so happy but Jesus healed him anyhow anyhow regardless of his complaining regardless of his bitterness regardless he gave him relief by like giving the first man who was there was asking for money he didn't tend to get healed that day he was just asking doing his normal thing asking for money but he got healed this man is bitter complaining but Jesus said just take your mat and go regardless that this man was complaining so sometimes we are complaining we are beat we are this but Jesus is just knocking at your door saying you know I've come to heal you regardless of whatever has happened to you regardless of the pain that is in your heart regardless of the bitterness that is in your heart just come just come as you are so Jesus said just take your mat and go so this man experienced the power of God and he got relief from the power of god when jesus uh when jesus got attention when jesus gave me his attention when jesus was present in this man's life this man got a relief it's my my third story comes from a woman i'm going to talk about two women in the last two examples the women that i'm going to talk about it is the woman luke 8 verse 43 to 48 Uh, the Bible says now a woman having an issue of flowing blood for 12 years who had spent all his livelihood on physicians she had spent all her money on doctors and could not be healed could not be healed this woman you know and uh, she came behind and tied the board of Jesus garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped and Jesus said who touched me Who touched me? Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, "Master, the multitude throng and press on you. You say, who touched me?" And Jesus said, "Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out of me." Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she has been healed immediately and he said to her daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you well go in peace listen to jesus listen to jesus listen to jesus this woman is trembling of fear this woman is afraid this woman is so ashamed this woman is shaken but listen to jesus daughter be of good cheer your faith is healed you go in peace which means jesus knew that this woman was in in in, uh, in turmoil jesus knew that this woman has been troubled for many years jesus knew that this woman has been embarrassed for many years i can imagine i'm trying to imagine today's day this woman with an issue of blood this woman i'm sure issue of blood i think this woman was bleeding everywhere i think she had spent all her money on doctors she had spent all her money maybe on buying pads she had spent all her money on blood transfusion she had spent all her money with the other condition that comes with the loss of blood she was losing life because life is in the blood 
and this woman was embarrassed probably where she sits in the bus she will leave blood on the seat when in the house she will be able to sit on a couch because there will be blood everywhere probably there will be stench wherever she was going because this woman had bled for so many for so many years and also probably she was smelling as well wherever she was going there was a stench around this woman for many years imagine that woman we had gone so many in so much problems for so many years she was a woman who was depressed she was a woman who was troubled with this issue of blood this issue of blood she could not hide it anymore because it was something which was very public something which was, was very obvious because it was bleeding throughout day but today your problem might not be exactly this woman of the issue of blood but your issue might be now publicly know, known your issue might be embarrassing the people around you your issue might be depressing you your issue might be taking your confidence away with this woman the issue of blood your issue might be I've been there for ages that you are now embarrassed to talk about it your issue might be actually thinking in the community where you are living your issue might be that you actually don't want to come out of your of your house you don't actually want to come out even to go to bed you actually don't want to come out of your home because you are so so depressed this issue has drained life out of you this issue has drained happiness out of you this issue has drained the joy out of you this issue might have drained any solution that you can think of out of you then your choice is just i'm going to just stay indoors i'm going to stay in my house you don't even the strength to go and bath if it's the strength to go and brush your teeth because the issue has been there for so long and you don't know your way out but what i want to say to you this woman she knew that because those days the woman with issue of blood even today you not be able to get out probably you'll be stoned by the Pharisees because we're not allowed to meet other people we were considered to be dirty so this woman was considered to be dirty but she said you know what if if I stay in my house I'll die anyway so let me go I feared about Jesus I feared about the king of kings I feared the power that Jesus was doing in the synagogue I feared about the healing of Jesus I feared about the authority of Jesus I've heard that is here with other people. So you know what? Even if even if people are going to stone me, I'll go anywhere because I'm dying either way. So let me follow Jesus. So she went, if only I can touch the hem of Jesus. If only I can touch the hem of Jesus, I'll be healed. This is what the woman was saying. I'm sure I think she was walking and saying, if only I could touch the hem of Jesus. If only I could touch the hem of this man. If only I could come close proximity of this man. If only I could be close to this man. She knew that there were so many people that were surrounding Jesus and that I'm sure she didn't have the power even to, to push through the pressure of going to Jesus, but she used so the strength that was left in her to go and touch the hem of Jesus. I'm saying to you today, you know what? You might be sleeping in your room, but I'm saying whatever strength that is remaining in you i'm saying seek jesus when seek jesus go to jesus no matter how embarrassing it is go to jesus no matter how how debilitating it is go to jesus no matter how discouraging it is go to jesus no matter how and 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 uh, you think it is thing will never change i'm saying just go to jesus because you said i would die anyway even if i stay but let me go let me go to jesus and touch the hem of his garment when he touched this his garment jesus knew that jesus knew knew this woman was coming so jesus know you in your closet jesus is knowing you in whatever that place that place you are jesus know about you in that that place you are right now but he's asking you just to go to him just to go to him because he knew he knew this woman because when she touched it he was walking but he knew that virtue has come out of me so he knew that and he said daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you well go in peace 
This is a restored woman. This woman was restored. She was healed. Then Jesus said, in restoring a peace to this woman. So this woman was restored to peace, restored to love, restored to care, restored to dignity, restored to everything that she had lost for years. She was restored. I'm sure when she went back, people couldn't remember who she was. She started to pick up herself and got back to original place, maybe even a better place that she has been, that she has been. She went even to a better place. So, he, but this woman was determined to meet Jesus, no matter how hopeless the situation is. So today I'm saying, whatever your, your situation might be hopeless it is, I'm saying, seek Jesus, go to Jesus, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't feel judged, don't worry about people. Even the disciples, I'm sure if they'd seen this woman, they'd have pushed away. What are you doing to Jesus? What are you doing? What do you want here? What do you want here? I'm sure there are people who may, who may feel judged that if I go to church, people will say, if I start going to church, they'll say, who's this woman? Who is this woman who's still doing drugs? Who's this woman who's still doing alcohol? Who's this woman who's still being a prostitute? Who's this woman? Who's this person who's still doing this thing? But I'm saying, go to Jesus, even in your present condition. Go to Jesus with your bleeding. Go to Jesus with your embarrassment. Go to Jesus with that whatever situation that you are. And you will surely restore your peace. You will surely give you back your cheer. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith is made you well. Go in peace. Amen. Sing the Lord for now.
when this woman was brought with it. And they just brought with that. They just brought it alone. I don't know who the man was. Maybe the man was good. Maybe the person who the woman was was good. So I'm sure in your heart you are doing it. You are right. Come and hold on to God. There's so many questions in your heart. But the people you hear and you don't know where to give them. But the great thing is that I know that God finishes me here. They said so many things. They've been we've been treated um, unfairly. So we are justified. So why do we feel like we're wrong? I'm just saying we've been treated unjustly. Paul still was a man of God. This woman, but he did not argue that he was a Jew because the crowd were against him. He was one against the crowd. He was one against the representatives. He was one against the Pharisees. He was one person against.